India is quietly positioning themselves to become the latest superpower among developed nations. They have a rising GDP, the largest diaspora of citizens living in different countries throughout the world, and are uniquely positioned for international trade and military defense. They are also one of the world's most neutral countries, holding alliances with various neighboring nations and diplomacy groups. It makes sense for India to be seen as becoming the new Switzerland. Economically, India is in fine shape. As fear of a global recession rises, India is expected to log the best performance of any developed nation's economy. The World Bank estimates that India will see growth of as much as 6.6% compared to 4.3% for China and a mere 0.5% for the US. The Center for Economics and Business Research in the UK estimates that India's annual GDP will grow on average by 6.4% over the next five years and 6.5% for the nine years after that. India has recently surpassed the UK as the fifth largest economy in the world and is expected to take over the fourth spot from Germany by 2026. Their economy currently stands at $3.5 trillion. India is also the world's number one or two exporter of goods in the world, with only China able to beat or match their effectiveness. They have one of the world's largest populations with over 1.4 billion citizens. They're expected to pass China as the world's most populous country by the end of 2023. The country has a working age population of over 900 million workers and is expected to hit the 1 billion mark over the next decade. These factors make India appealing to outside investors looking to business in the region. India is one of the most neutral international arbiters in the world, and for good reason. When your country does business the world over, sits in the perfect place for international trade, and has the largest diaspora of expats living everywhere in the world, it makes sense to favor diplomacy. Much like Switzerland, India relies on its reputation, its stability, and its economic wealth to harbor goodwill between nations. India has several diplomatic agreements with several foreign influence groups throughout the globe. Since 2009, India has been a member of the BRICS group. BRICS stands for Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. This partnership was created in order to promote peace, security, and economic partnership. This helps to ensure that any conflict that arises between nations can be first approached with diplomacy before any military action necessary. BRICS is not the only international peace and trade agreement that India belongs to. Since 2007, India has participated in the Quadrilateral Security Dialogue involving India, the United States, Japan, and Australia. The purpose of this agreement is to police the waters of the Pacific Ocean, ensuring safe trade routes between nations. Shared economic interests keep all parties civil. India is also part of the ASEAN bloc, which stands for the Association of Southeast Asian Nations. The ASEAN bloc consists of India and 10 different countries in the India-Pacific region, including Thailand, Singapore, Vietnam, the Philippines, and Malaysia. This group has a similar goal of the quadrilateral security dialogue while simultaneously securing the Malacca Strait to ensure trade. India has historically been geographically positioned as an ideal place for trade. It sits between three of the most active trading routes in the world. The Adel Mandeb Strait leads to the Suez Canal in the Mediterranean. Both make up a vital artery for trade between Europe, Africa, and Asia. 30% of the world's shipping containers pass through the Suez Canal, making up 12% of the world's maritime trade. 
India has become even more important in the world's oil market due to several countries withdrawing from trade with Russia over the war with Ukraine. The Hormuz Strait flows from the Parisian Gulf into the Indian Ocean, and with it go valuable shipments of Saudi oil. So India helps move almost one-fifth of the world's natural gas consumption internationally. The Malacca Strait facilitates more than one-fourth of the world's trade. 80% of Chinese oil is facilitated by the Malacca Strait, and the strait is crucial to help China, the world's number one exporter, deliver goods to Europe and the West. China's massive shoreline faces a number of countries that are either friendly with the West or adversarial to China itself, so the most valuable path for trade from China is through the Malacca Strait. India's inclusion in the ASEAN bloc allows India to act as an intermediary to ensure trade from and to China. In 2000, the first EU-India summit was held, strengthening the relationship between the two. And by 2004, that relationship had grown into a strategic partnership. By 2019, the EU represented the largest trading partner to India, doing over $78 billion worth of business together. And in 2020, India and the EU signed a roadmap to strengthen their economic ties in terms of climate change, human rights, research, and security. India has strong IT, manufacturing, and pharmaceutical industries to bolster their GDP. The country boasts a large, well-educated, English-speaking middle-class labor force as well. These are all contributing factors to India gaining ground on its rival China in several areas. India's workforce is as youthful as it is useful, and China's labor base is aging and earning higher wages, giving India a competitive edge that continues to grow. Not to mention China's less than stellar geopolitical relationships with Western countries have given India the opportunity to continue growing as the supply chains shift and change. Due to India's demographics, their demand for goods and services is predicted to be high. A large working age population needs essentials such as food and energy, which breeds demand for infrastructure investment. These are contributing factors to India's fast-growing GDP. Another factor making India appear a more favorable investment destination than China is its climate policies. India plans to reach net zero emissions by 2070 and has plans in place to make sure that renewable energy accounts for 50% of India's energy needs by 2030. But what may be the most alluring factor to foreign investors is the rise of China plus one business strategies. Coined in 2013, the China plus one global business strategy is when companies avoid investing only in China and diversify their businesses to alternative destinations. Issues such as the China-US trade war, the COVID-19 pandemic, disrupted supply chains, higher freight rates, and the rising cost of labor are all reasons that multinational companies must reduce their focus of their business interests solely in China and diversify it to other developing nations. Attractive alternative countries that include Mexico, Vietnam, Malaysia, and of course India. Companies engaged in the China Plus One strategy turn to India as their first alternative due to a majority of the characteristics mentioned previously. India's diplomatic relations with most of the world, as well as trade agreements and various treaties, keeps India from out of a lot of violent conflicts. However, that doesn't mean that this neutral country hasn't had to take action to defend itself. India has a decades-long rivalry with neighboring China, and there have been several disputes regarding the 3,488 kilometers long Himalayan border. In 2022, these disputes became violent as Chinese and Indian soldiers fought in the Galwan Valley at the southeastern edge of Aksai Shin, an area that has been occupied by China since 1962. 
40 Chinese and 96 Indian troops were wounded and or killed in the skirmish. Situations like this are part of the reason why India maintains good relations with Russia, their main weapons supplier. Approximately 67% of Indian submarines, 68% of anti-ship cruise missiles, 97% of their fighter jets and tanks come from Russia. India's dependence on Russian arms may have influenced why India did not condemn the Russian war with Ukraine. Although a skirmish broke out over a border dispute, it was quickly halted and cooler heads prevailed. Both China and India have too much economic interest and trade activity between their own and allied neighboring countries to progress things further. Both countries absolutely must protect the Malacca Strait because any disruption of trade could prove disastrous. Indian leaders feel that Russia could use its ties with China to help curtail their efforts to engage with India. The US and other Western nations weren't in favor of India's lack of condemnation towards Russia for invading the Ukraine. However, India's ties to Russia serve as a check to U.S. influence over India, seeing as if relationships with the West turn sour. India can take sides and back Russia, which could turn China from an economic rival to a wartime ally. India's Russia learning neutrality has since proven fruitful, as the country has benefited from cheaper Russian oil and access to other commodities. This decision has also cooled down the Indian-Chinese border dispute for now. But in the long run, this decision to lean towards Russia could prove costly. The Ukraine has military support from the West, so if tensions rise again between China and India, Russia may be limited in their ability to support India militarily or mediate the dispute. In summation, India is fast becoming the latest developed superpower in the modern world. They're on pace to upset China as the world's most populous country and the world's number one exporters of goods. Their young, educated and specialized workforce is attractive to foreign investment and India is currently enjoying consistent growth in an environment where its rivals have trouble recovering from the COVID-19 global pandemic. India's diplomacy and trade relationships span the globe. Their unique geography sets them in an opportune place to engage in and facilitate global trade. Doing business internationally with many foreign partners keeps India free from conflict for the most part. Their military strategy is to remain neutral, but to lean towards countries that give them strategic advantages. Relying on trade and security from neighboring countries, some with ties to potential threats, also keeps India neutral. In these and many other ways, India is quickly becoming much like the Switzerland of Asia. Thanks for watching, and please remember to like, subscribe, and keep coming back to the richest for more of our featured content.